Hello everyone, this is the second part of our video designed to give you an idea of the home buying process. Thanks for joining us. I'm Daniel Patron, co-founder of S3 Realty. In our first video on this topic, we covered the offer, the counter offer, earnest money, and the title commitment. And if you didn't watch that, go back and watch it now so you'll know all the steps in order. Now the next item on the path to home ownership is number five, the inspection. Now the buyer has the right to hire an inspector and it is highly recommended to get an inspection report on the property. Now this doesn't mean that the seller has to fix everything the inspector finds. Rather, it's a way for the buyer to know what they're buying. Does that make sense? We don't have the inspection done so we can gouge the seller into fixing everything. We have it done so we know what we're buying. Now that being said, if there is something that needs attention for the house to be conveyed, or if there is a concern, we of course can go back to the seller and ask them to address that issue. And typically we're looking for mechanical safety or preventative things. For example, maybe a water heater that's about to go, poor flashing on a roof that could potentially be allowing water under siding or shingles and doing additional damage. Maybe there is improper or maybe no operational CO or smoke detectors. Those are just some examples. Now, part of my job is to help you secure a, a functioning safe home that doesn't have any deficiencies to the extent where additional damage could be happening. I hope that makes sense. That takes us to number six, the inspection objection. If something does come up on the inspection that for whatever reason needs to be addressed, you'll work with your agent to submit something called an inspection objection. The objection is exactly what it sounds like. You are objecting to the condition of the house and are requesting that the seller either fix the issue or compensate you for the issues and that you'll take care of the issues after closing. Now typically this compensation could be a reduction in price or a seller concession, again typically. And that leads us to number seven, the inspection resolution. After receiving the objection, the seller and the listing agent will respond with a resolution. And that resolution answers your request. And you may or may not get everything you asked for. Sometimes there are a few rounds of negotiations before a resolution is agreed upon. I think this is number eight, the appraisal. Typically, the lender orders the appraisal as soon as the realtors give them authorization to do so, which is typically right after the inspection resolution. Now, during 2016, appraisals were taking anywhere from 7 to 25 days, depending on lo the loan type, the lender, and of course, the appraiser. Now, the idea of waiting until after the inspection is not to waste the buyer's money if the house doesn't pass the inspection process. So, if the appraisal comes back at the contract price or above, we're good to go. If it comes back below the uh, contract price with, or with conditions, additional steps will need to be taken to correct the conditions or adjust the price. That takes us to number nine, which is the ILC or survey. Sometimes a survey or ILC needs to be done. These are typically done in more rural areas or places like Manitou Springs or Old Colorado City where the property boundaries may be unclear. Sometimes neighbors unintentionally build garages or sheds on the property line or even over the line, and these surveys need to be done to determine the boundaries. Now, in most subdivisions or neighborhoods where there are fences or clear property lines, this step is often skipped. And number 9.5, underwriting. Okay, at this point we've navigated through all the tough stuff, the inspection, the appraisal, and everything else that could blow up a deal, but during this whole process, you've been working with your lender providing him or her with all the documents they need, and your file has probably been sent to underwriting a few times. Now, once you've supplied all the necessary documentation, your loan, hopefully, gets funded, and we receive the final approval from your lender. Now, at this point, the lender will send us a copy of the buyer's settlement disclosure, and this document will have the amount needed to close number on it. Now, the day before closing, you're gonna to wanna to go to your bank and get a cashier's check in that amount and show up the next day for closing. And that takes us to number 10, closing. Okay, you've made it. The day of closing is here. You show up with your realtor and most likely your lender and you gather around the closing table, which is typically at the title office. Now, be sure to bring your ID and the right amount of money and be prepared for whichever hand you sign with to have cramps for a couple of days because you're gonna sign a lot of documents. Now typically you get keys and garage door openers 
here at the closing table after all the signing has been completed and the money's been transferred. So that's it. That is the buying process in a nutshell. If you didn't pick up on it, I use the word typically eight or nine times and probably five or six times. And that's because each transaction is its own unique beast. And in this video is designed to give you a quick overview of what a straightforward buying situation looks like. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you learned something, if you need an expert to walk you through the home buying process and experience, I'd love to be your representative of what could be the biggest purchase of your life. If I can be of service to you, your friends, family, colleagues, or acquaintances, please share this video with them and have them contact me because I can't help if they don't call. Thanks for watching, liking, and sharing, and we'll see you on the next video.